a news broadcast, kind of a recapping of events that's happened over the past. But my purpose is, by the end of this, I hope to instill in you just how soon Christ is coming and to try to motivate you to get out and work as hard as we can because there's very little time left. I think once you've heard some of the things that uh, I've researched, uh, you'll be like, well, how come the rapture hasn't happened by the time you get done telling us this? That's how soon it's coming. Um, you see, back in March of 2009, I rededicated, rededicated my life to the Lord, or April, April of 2009. And in March of 2009, I started um, having visions of the Lord, but not resting on that alone. The Lord prompted me to research, and the research has taken me to some pretty fantastic uh, places. And so this is what we're going to talk about. Okay, let's start right out with Matthew chapter 24. Starting where Jesus starts to talk, verse 2. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one of these stones should be left upon, left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now that he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? When will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no one deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of rumors, wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated for my, by all nations for my name's sake. And it goes on, and finally he says, at the end of this small discourse, he says, uh, when these things begin to come to pass, look up. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, look up. Amen. Look up. Mm -hmm. Look up. Because our redemption draws nigh. Now, let's get into why we're here. Rap, uh, uh, sorry, Revelation chapter 13, mm -hmm. verses 16 down through. No. Yes. <laughs> Yep, uh, 13, 16. And he caused us all, both great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive the mark on the right hand or on their forehead. And that no one may buy or sell except he who has the mark or the, or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let he who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For it is a number of a man. And his number is 603 score and 6, or 666. What I have found through my research is that a lot of people are talking about the mark of the beast. But no one really knows what it is. But what I have found is not the actual mark of the beast, but the infrastructure for the mark of the beast is being put into place right now. There is um, things being set up right now. Let me, the best way to explain this is this. Just as the way was prepared for Jesus via John the Baptist, Come on. Mm -hmm. the way for the Antichrist is being prepared right, right now. Come on. Things are happening around the world that the people that are involved may not even be cognizant of. So I'm not going to play the blame game. I'm not going to say that this one or that one, well, he's going to help the Antichrist. No, I don't know if they even know that they're doing, what they're doing is, is if they know they're helping the Antichrist. It may be like a, a demonic muse standing over their shoulder saying, oh, go this way, go that way. 
and steering things in, into a position where everything is being laid out. What is the mark of the beast? And how close are we coming, uh, is this to becoming reality? Now, one thing, too, um, right now we live on a cash-based society. Cash or gold. I mean, you could spend gold if you wanted to. You could spend gold or silver if you had to. You could bargain for it. But we basically deal with cash throughout the world. Even though we have credit cards and everything else, it's all based on cash. What kind of system would have to be in place where that you could not buy or sell unless you had a mark? Well, as long as there's a black market system, you can use cash, whether you got a mark or not. If you go under the counter someplace, they don't care if you get a mark on your skin or a chip in your skin or whatever. As long as you've got cash, they'll buy it. That's how the drug trade, trade operates and everything else, is because we have cash. What kind of system would have to be in place for the mark of the beast to work, to prevent people? Well, yeah. How would you prevent people from buying and selling, okay? So it has to be a cashless society, mm -hmm. or like, like your cards in your wallet, like your bank card or a credit card. But beyond that, it has to be secure. It cannot be forged. It must be scannable. It must have all your identification information on it. <coughs> We're going to go into that right now. Have you heard talk since 2009, actually March of 2009, we've heard talk of one world monetaries. The Obama was talking to the Chinese ambassador and they was talking about a one world currency. Mm -hmm. It's something that's been whispered about mm -hmm. in the past. And there's been talk of, since the rise of the Euro, there's been talk of, of a, uh, an Amero or a North American dollar. We're going to look at some of the most likely pieces of the puzzle when you're putting up, when you put them all together, add up to the mark of the beast. The technology involved is until this decade, actually until this century, <clears throat> until this century, the technology was not available to have what is talked about in Revelations chapter 13. Uh, it was not available. Not to be able to be completely secure in that fashion. So here's what we're going to talk about. RFID, that's a, the big buzzwords, is RFID, a device called Square, the healthcare record system, that's a big one, uh, a company that is part of the cattle industry called Somark and IBM. What do all these things have in common? First, radio frequency identification, some call it the chip. You've all heard about it in the news. People are getting it in their pets. Some people have had it implanted under their skin, right here in the in the, this part of their skin even. Uh, radio frequency identification is all it is, is something that you can scan. It has a small amount of information on it. <clears throat> it can have a, a limited amount of storage. In other words, you can't have like a world library on it. But you can have probably, you know, basic information like your name, your identification numbers and things like that. You're limited by the size. Um, there's two different types. There's a passive and active. Active means it has a battery source, some kind of power, which means it can be detected from further distance. A passive has to have a magnetic field run through it and able to make electrons flow through it and then be read again on the other side. So it has no, most of your RFID tags are passive in nature. The ones that you see in the store that you get in the back of your tags and stuff that you have to take out, those are all passive <coughs> in nature. It's in most of the products that you buy. <coughs> it's even been put into pets and some people. By itself, this is probably not the mark of the beast. And I'll tell you why. As it stands right now, this cannot be part of a uh, uh, come in contact with a large magnetic field. So an MRI machine would be out. 
You can no longer get an MRI machine if you have one of these under your skin because it has metal in it. ...that's involved. This allows that phone to read a source, a magnetic source, transfer that information via the cell towers to a bank, transfer from one account to another account, and back again if need be, and have a record of it. That's, what, that's the important part of this device. For the mark to work, you have to make person-to-person -person transactions. You can't go to the bank every time you want to sell something at your house, or set up a lemonade stand, or <coughs> something along that line. <coughs> Um, these devices are completely portable and do not need to be phone based. Uh, the next gen thank you. The next generation of devices that come along will probably uh, be like a small calculator, like a solar powered calculator that could store all of the information and then you go to the bank and it dumps it down the next time you go to the bank. Or it can be like a cell, it can, in other words, it can operate on the cell towers without actually having the cell capabilities. These could actually be issued by the bank as soon as you get a checking account. That would be the next step in the technology, which is already out there, by the way. So much. <laughs> this company was created by um, a farmer. He was looking for a way to scan his cattle as they come through. Uh, you've all seen the ear tags. Well, they have ear tags that have RFID in them, uh, but he wanted a better way to do it so that he wouldn't have to, because uh, they get ripped off and they get infection. Every time they get infection, you have to have penicillin. That destroys the milk. You cannot uh, any cow that has an infection you can't take the milk from. So he wanted to eliminate that aspect of it. So he got together with a guy that was do experimenting with uh, um, a type of ink that can carry an electrical impulse. Um, and they got together and they created this scannable tattoo, which can be invisible or visible, a choice of colors. Uh, why is this important? The mark does not have to have all your information on it. It only needs to have a 10-digit code. The information can be stored off-site, like on the internet. This is unaffected by magnetic fields, which deals with the aspect of it, where uh, would the Antichrist tell 100% of the population that you can no longer get an MRI? That's one thing that you have to look at. IBM. IBM even has commercials right now on the air of a Mark of the Beast actually working. It, they don't call it the market beast, they call it something else. Mm. Uh, innovative technology or something like that uh, is the buzzwords that they use. The guy walks into the store, he's got a big jacket on, he starts putting things in his jacket left and right, looks yep. like he's shoplifting, I've right? That. Security yep. guard starts following him around, mm. he walks out the front door, uh, thing scans him, and the security guard stops him and says, hey, you forget your receipt. Mm. Because uh, what happened is all the RFID products were on, on the products. So as he walked out, it scanned all the products that he had on him, automatically deducted that from his account, and printed off a receipt as he walked out. That is what IBM is doing right now. They're building the infrastructure for that to work. They've actually advertised it. I mean, it's not like they're hiding it. Mm. It's actually been advertised. They make all of the scanners, uh, the software for the RFID integration, so the scanner can talk to the bank, can talk to the, to talk to the store, so you can do inventory and uh, your accounts and all of that. Now this is the biggest piece of the puzzle. The healthcare computerized record system. Back in early 2009, I think it was February of 2009, when they announced the stimulus package. There was something in the stimulus package that the Lord gave me a vision of, actually. Um, that uh, will allow the mark of the beast to work as a template for the entire world. Now I'm going to talk about it. Um, this is kind of hard to explain. 
You may ask yourself, what does the healthcare system have to do with the mark of the beast? In the stimulus package, they set aside money to update the record system for all of the hospitals in the United States. What they want to do is put everybody's medical records online or on computer. Not necessarily online, but it would be virtually online. It may not be accessed by your home computer, but it would be, be accessed by all the other computers in, in the hospitals, which makes it secure. That's another big buzzword and important part of it. It has to be secure. But think about what's in your medical records. Your address, your next of kin, your blood type, your DNA even, maybe even fingerprints for the early born uh, now. They have footprints uh, that they take. They have your banking information, your insurance information, uh, your, your health history, your parents and your, your family's health history, all your children's names, your parents' names, and most people don't lie when they go to the hospital so they can continue to get services. Even, um, this is a little known secret, but most illegal aliens don't bother to lie when they go to the hospital because they know they're not going to get caught. So they walk in, they give the correct information, they walk back out because they know they're not going to get caught. This will be the engine that runs the mark of the beast. This computer system. Right now, they actually have a working prototype of this in some hospitals. Right now, that they have RFID product, uh, the RFID tags on all of the equipment in the hospital, and on all of the badges that the doctors and nurses have, and on all of the tags that the patients have, the wristbands. So they, you can go to a computer and type in anybody or anything and know exactly where it is in the hospital. If you want to know where this bunch of pills is, you type it in and it'll, uh, uh, a little map will come up and it'll point to exactly where it is in the hospital. This is kind of like a miniature version of what the mark would be like. The way it scans, retails information, everything like that. It puts them all together, what do you get? If you use the health care record system to house your ID and then add in your debit card and credit cards to it, IBM can link everything together so that you can use your Stormark tattoo as a worldwide, worldwide ID, debit card, medical alert, bra medic alert bracelet, credit card, so you can walk into a store, grab a bunch of stuff, walk out without ever talking to a cash register person. You can be driving down the street, or driving down the road, speeding, a cop can pull you over, scan your hand, see if you're wanted or not, deduct the money from the ticket directly from your account, and send, or set it up on a payment plan, and send you on your merry way, without ever asking for your wallet, see whether or not you're insured, everything can be all punched straight in together. We've been of the notion in the past that the mark of the beast would be imposed by some, some religions and said that it's going to be like a thing the thumbnail pushed, pushed down on everybody to impose, to hurt, to control everybody. What if the Antichrist actually sells it and campaigns on it as a way to save everybody? Let me paint a, a small picture for you. Say there's a a disaster, like, let's say New York City gets nuked. I mentioned New York City because there have been several people that have visions and dreams about New York getting destroyed by a disaster. So let's say that there's a large terrorist attack in New York City that causes massive destruction, and then a large blackout that encompasses most of the, North, most of the Northeast. There's already food shortages right now around the world. Have you been watching the news? Mm -hmm. There's food shortages all over the world. Do you know that, I think it was 
of the world's wheat crop had wheat rot or dry rot, um, a kind of a, it's like blight only it's dry. Gasoline is continuing to rise all the time because there's fewer and fewer. They say by towards 2050 that will be dry of gasoline unless they tap new resources, it's the ones that we have right now. Can you see how things could come late together? Large disasters. Right now, look at the world. Turkey. Um, not Iraq, but Iraq too. Iraq and Afghanistan. Turmoil. Iran. Turmoil. Sudan. Sudan. Um, Egypt. Great turmoil right now. All over the world, people are kind of maybe subconsciously crying out for a savior. People all over the world are crying out, save us, save us. Look at Greece and Turkey and all and the whole EU for that matter. The economy is failing all over the world. Mm -hmm. Which is funny because usually when an economy fails one place, it rises someplace else. This is the way it works. It's usually like a balancing act. The, the economy will rise someplace and then it will fall someplace else. The economy over the entire planet is falling. Why is that? The stimulus package did a couple of things. It took a bunch of money out of circulation and it put the fear into businesses that taxes would be raised. Mm. So businesses pull back. In other words, they're not advancing in investing because they think they're going to get hit hard with taxes later on. But there's talk about it right now. So what's that do? That sets back the economy. We're seeing a little bump right now. That's just only because Americans' economy is so large that it's very difficult to bring it down completely because there's just so much consumption in the United States that uh, it, it has a tendency to, to bring itself back just by itself. Um, if we think about a disaster in New York, people all over the world crying out for help, the Antichrist comes up and says, hey, I can help you, I can save you, I can save your economy, I can stop crime, I can eliminate terrorism, and I can make things a lot more convenient for everybody. Here's how he can do that. He can sell it. This is how he can sell it. The mark of the beast could be used to eliminate taxes. Well, how do you do that? By having a shared burden, which is something these liberals like to talk about, a shared burden. Um, if you have just 1% tax on every purchase, every time you make a hand, a hand purchase, take 1% out of that, that would be more than all the taxes put together that we pay right now. be double what we pay for taxes right now. But yeah, it would be le it felt less on the pocketbook. Because of all the fraud, that would be eliminated. Mm -hmm. There would no longer be any fraud whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Because you can't go, you can't sneak any cash under the table. There would be no more drug deals, because you all record, there would be a record for every transaction. And there's only so many times you can sell the same TV. They're going to get wise to that. I mean, there's no way that you're going to be able to spend how many hundreds and hundreds of dollars it would be for um, the drugs that you need because it would be a record of every single transaction. Which is why that they, there's so much in cash. You know, they love cash. American cash is bought all over the world just for that purpose. is to use in on black market because it's had been so stable in the past and so easy to launder. This would be, here's how this would might work, okay? Every person would have a zone where your mark would allow you to go, like a passport, right? When you go to apply for a passport, in this case, you wouldn't actually get a picture ID passport now. They'd just say, okay, you're allowed to go to Israel, or you're allowed to go to France, or you're allowed to go to England and you're allowed to stay there for so many days. And after that, you can't eat because they just shut you off. You're wanted by the law. They turn off your mark. 
So now you have to turn yourself in or starve. It actually